the 13. Robinson's pass thrown incomplete. He was under extreme pressure. Scott Brantley, 55, was firing at him, and he just simply could not deliver the ball. Here's number 55, Brantley again. Just a freshman, and I'll tell you this, he's a real tough football player. He is wiping off to the side of the pass, puts the heat on, Kimes, or Ra Robinson rather, Matt Robinson, puts him on his back. 71 in the play was Michael Dupree for Florida. Second down and 10. Robinson to throw again. Oh! Blindsided by number four, Alvin Parrish, fumble, Florida recovery. <laughs> Nobody saw Mr. Parrish coming, oh. and that is a cornerback's dream right there. We put a little tattoo on him there. Woo, did he hit him. He didn't see him coming. Boy, that blindside tackle is really vicious. Alvin Parrish covered the ball for Florida. And suddenly, Georgia's threatening, but one big play defensively, and Florida's got the ball back. First down at the 33. You'll very seldom see a harder hit than that. West Chandler wide to the left side. Gators leading 20 to 13. Fisher. And the Florida quarterback runs it outside the 40 to the 42. Watch number four come whistling in here now and make the hit. They gotta have a blitz on. Watch Alvin, per uh, Alvin uh, Parrish yeah, come from the backside. Robinson does not see him. And look at his head rattle, and the ball comes loose. It's one of those blindside things. You can see from upstairs here that they were going to blitz. They went into man-to-man -man coverage on it. Dupree recovers the loose football. Florida now second down. One yard to go from the 41-yard line. It is Earl Carr. And Carr's got the first down as he jukes one Georgia defender and gets out to the 44-yard line. So here come the Gators again, leading by seven, and here's Bill. Okay, uh, Bo Schemberger said he wanted a close game. He's got one. Ricky Leach <laughs> passed 64 yards to Jim Smith for Michigan's go-ahead touchdown, 14 to 13. And in that game now, there's 12 minutes and 20 seconds to go in the fourth quarter at West Lafayette. Oh, good ball game. Here's Fisher rolling the throw. Throws it out there. The Chandler is incomplete. Chandler working in front of number 41, Bobby Thompson, but Fisher couldn't get enough heat on the ball to get it to him. About 126 left. Let's look for some screens and draws possibly in here. And of course, I think uh, they're going to put it up and throw the ball. I think Fisher's going to throw it that time. It looked like somebody might have deflected the ball. He didn't have anything on it. Scott Schuler comes in, number 19. He's a wide receiver for Florida. 128 to go in the first half. There's your broken bone lineup. Fisher rolls out. Goes down the middle, and it is intercepted by Mark Mitchell of Georgia. And he comes back to the 43-yard line. So we've had two big defensive plays, one for each side. And we've got a man hurt. Looks like Mitchell is down. So with a minute and 19 seconds to play, let's have another look. There's Mark Mitchell. They call him the smallest of the runs. That's what they call him. They call him the... Uh, junkyard dogs and Ronnie in the runs and you see Mark Mitchell the littlest guy on that whole group picks the ball off and returns comes back uh, with good field position 119 to go 20 to 13 Florida well we have a minute and 19 seconds to play in the first half of this ball game total yards Georgia 191 Florida 194 the score is 20 to 13 and down on the floor of the gate of Olitz, first down Georgia at their own 43-yard line. Matt Robinson, the quarterback, under pressure, loops it out to McClendon. McClendon with open field. McClendon breaks it all the way down to the Florida, 33-yard line. First down, Bulldog. <laughs> Up and down the field this afternoon. This is two offensive ball clubs. 24 yards on the play. Alvin Cowens, number 24, finally brought him down. They stopped the clock to move the chains, except they haven't really. The clock's continued to run, and they're supposed to stop it when they're moving the chains. No, the blimp isn't coming inside the stadium. That's just the perspective. A fumble! Robinson did not get away with the snap cleanly. Has to dive in and recover. Ken Helms is now in at the center position for Georgia, number 53, replacing Joe Tarashinsky. So you get a new center or you get a new quarterback or if you get both 
then you can have that kind of trouble. Timeouts remaining in the ball game. Florida three, Georgia two. 44 seconds to play, and Ohio State leading Illinois 21 to nothing. So, Bo Schembechler had said a week ago that he would would like to have his Michigan Wolverines get tested, get into a ball game where they'd have to scratch, and they're certainly having to do that today at Purdue. We'll be right back with more from the Gator Bowl. It will be now second down and 11 yards to go for the Georgia Bulldogs at the Florida 34 yard line with 44 seconds to play in the first half. Matt Robinson back to throw. Throws short to McClendon. Missed him. So it'll be third down and 11. And here are some more scores at Penn State. Looks like Joe Paterno is getting his people out of the hospital and getting them well again. 27 7 over North Carolina State. Maryland and Cincinnati as the Terrapins roll along undefeated. Oklahoma and Kansas State first quarter score and a couple of big ball games out in that big eight conference that Bill Fleming will document as the day wears on particularly the one between Oklahoma State and Nebraska third down 11 McClendon in motion Pollard stays back to box Robinson's pass is away and it is intercepted by LeCount for Florida LeCount is looking out. for a wall look out one block, he may go. Nope, can't get it. Pollard finally knocks him out of bounds with 21 seconds to play. The Florida Gators intercepted as LeCount brings it all the way back inside midfield to the Georgia 43. Norris, Ulysses Norris, was the intended receiver. The pass was underthrown, enabling LeCount to cut in front, and there's the young man you talked about as helping shore up the secondary for Florida. Not only that, but you take a split receiver. He was a former wideout, which has good hands, and he made a great interception there, like a reception. Quick recovery by Florida to form the blocking. Fisher over the middle. The pass is complete to Stevens. And Jimmy Stevens is down to the Georgia eight-yard line. <laughs> the clock stops with 13 seconds to play. Oh, my. A lot of things happening here in the last minute and a half, and Florida calls time. <laughs> Fisher comes right back to the pocket. Stevens, Jimmy Stevens, goes right straight through the heart of the defensive secondary, and Fisher lays it right in there. He had to throw over top of the defenders. The ball drops right into Stevens' hands right here. He makes a great catch. Goes down to the 13-yard line. Is this an up-and-down game? Up and down the field. Johnny Henderson and Bill Crook. Crook was the man that uh, was just wasn't tall enough to slap it away. He needed that kind of height. <laughs> 13 seconds to play in the first half. Florida leading 20 to 13. Georgia was threatening. Now suddenly two big plays. Bang, bang, and Florida is down on the Georgia. Nine-yard line, first and goal to go. Florida should get out of here with probably at least three points. We'll see. They have two timeouts left. Or three. No, they have two, two. timeouts. Yeah. Posey, seven out of 14 in his field goals from there and be a chip shot for it. They have time for just one play here. Let's see what happens. Fisher to throw it. Looking for Chandler. Wide open. Johnny Henderson fell down. And that left Chandler absolutely alone. And Florida jumps to a big lead. This is the third successive year that the Florida Gators have had the opportunity to win a Southeastern Conference title, a title they have never won in the school's history. Look like Johnny Henderson just fell down. Yeah. Kick by Posey. Good. I don't know, Keith, whether uh, Wes Chandler put such a move on him that he got tangled up or whether or not he just slipped there. Let's take a look at that. Hard to see from up here, but he just left him standing there. Fisher just rolls out. Chandler, you can't see. He's in the lower part of the screen here. You'll see Henderson slip and fall. You see him right there on the hash mark. You can't see whether it was a Chandler move. This Chandler just breaking to the outside from the slot position. Let's take a look now and see what happens to Henderson. 
Oh, well, he just, gets tangled yeah, up gets on the other back up. coming across. Yep. I didn't see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was sort of a, a running pick. They were in man-to-man -man coverage. That's illegal, Coach. Yes, it is. <laughs> but now they, they didn't, he didn't pick him. He just tripped over his feet there. Uh, <laughs> you know the rules, too, don't you? Uh, from the 40, Posey hits it. It bounces, and it's Washington. Gene Washington is game tackled as he gets up to the 22-yard line, and we have now four ticks remaining. Now, if you run a pick play, like you talk about picks in basketball, that is, you run a man in front, and seal off someone from it, then it's illegal. But yes. there, uh, he did not really make any effort to seal anybody. It's just that the, uh, Henderson got tangled up with his own man. Well, he forced Henderson behind the inside man coming, and uh, he got tangled up with his legs. Right, you cannot actually screen a man, which you call a running pick or a block. You have to avoid him, but you can run a pass route. And that's what, what happened there. Uh -oh. Georgia Bulldogs take the snap, run the clock out. They'll go to the locker room, trailing the Florida Gators by a score of 27 to 13 at halftime. The leading coach, of course, is Doug Dickey, the head man of the Florida Gators, and here he is with Jim Lentley. Coach, all year long, people are worried about your defense, and they made two big plays in the last five minutes that put you way ahead. Well, they played, I think, pretty solid football defensively, and, and we've had some good execution offensively, but Jimmy Fisher's done a super job so far, so... No, we just got to keep going. It's only halfway over. I can tell you without equivocation, we've never seen this year such an explosive offense. Well, we've got some people that can run, and, and you know, they're doing their thing well today, so I hope we'll keep it going, Jim. Will a two-touchdown lead change your offense at all? No, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think that's enough. I don't think you're going to win a ball game like that. I think it's got to keep going, and I hope we can do a couple more out there. Okay, thank you for spending time with us, Coach Doug Dickey. We'll be back with halftime festivities from the Gator Bowl, including the Fireman's Fun flashback. We return right after this. The University of Georgia in Athens, established in 1785, is the first chartered state university in the United States. Classes which began in 1801 were first held under oak trees, since there was no money to erect a permanent building. However, that is not the case today, as the University of Georgia is rapidly expanding. Among the outstanding newer buildings are its $2.5 million center for continuing education, new residence halls, the $13 million science center, a new arts center, a $6 million graduate research center, a new pharmacy building, a $6 million journalism psychology building, and a new $4 million coliseum. Attendance in the university's initial years averaged between 30 and 40 students. Now in the fall semester of 1976, attendance has swelled to over 21,000 undergraduates, graduates, and special students. All games seem to give Florida momentum, and once they got started, they're awfully hard to stop. Well, that's an example of them being that explosive and a team that explosive. Uh, you can't uh, make mistakes like we did in the first half because then you'll get the many points as they got. We still got a chance to win this ball game. Which quarterback's going to start the second half for you? Ray Golf. Yeah, no question. But we'll go with Ray. We need to take it at him a little more, and we will. Thank you very much for spending time with us, Vince Dooley. Now let's go back up to Keith Jackson and Arrow Parsegan. Thank you very much, Jim Lampley. We're ready to kick off the second half. Deep for Florida. Earl Carr, 30. Willie Wilder, 44. Both can fly. Both run that 100 and about 9-6. Allen Levitt kicks off for Georgia. 27-13. Florida leads. Kick is very high. Well into the end zone. Wilder going to bring it out. It was a bad decision. He's dropped at about the 9-yard line. Couldn't seem to make up his mind on that, whether he was going to come out, and he decided to come out and hurt the nine-yard line, ten-yard line. All right, here are the starting backs for Florida. Jimmy Fisher at quarterback number 10. Willie Wilder at the halfback number 44. Tony Green has not played in the ball game. He has a bad neck. Carr's in instead. Robert Morgan's the fullback. Ball is just short of the 10-yard line. First down for the Florida Gators as we start the second half of play with the Gators holding a 14-point edge. Some mistakes by Georgia's defensive unit. First thing you know, bang, bang, Florida jumps out to a 14-point lead. Let's see if the Gators can get on track. Georgia comes out, and the junkyard dogs, number 61, Jeff Lewis, jumps all over the Florida quarterback. The offensive front for the Georgia, uh, for the Florida Gators, 89, of course, is Chandler. 79 is Forrester at tackle. Pupello, number 70, is at guard. In the middle, it's Robbie Moore snapping the ball. On the other side, it's triple. Played a very strong first half. Bruce Mullenick, 74, at tackle. And Jimmy Stevens, the tight end, who made a key catch in Florida's uh, last touchdown mark. They make it 
Here's Fisher now on second down and 10, keeping the ball. Pitches it out to Wilder, and Wilder's ridden out of bounds by Ben Zambese, the linebacker who just came flying across there. I'll tell you, this is a, an offensive football team with a lot of confidence. They're throwing that ball around back here, and uh, here's Zambese, number 44, leading tackler on the ball club, flows very well with the play. But there's Fisher dealing the ball off. And this is the comment that I was making down deep in their own, own territory. They have the kind of confidence in their option football game that they'll take those risk plays. Tony Green is in the ball game for the first time. Out of the full house wishbone. The ball is pitched to Carr. Cuts it upfield. George has got it at the 18-yard line. On third down and two and a half, they couldn't get it. Now here's Jimmy Griffin, 10 pound junior from Buckhannon, Georgia. Here's Jimmy Griffin, he's six foot two oh three, blows real well with the play. Fisher dealt the ball off very quickly. You can see the quickness that uh, Jimmy Griffin has. Of course, he gets some help, supporting help. Fourth down now, and Florida has to go to the punt. Alan Williams will do the kicking, averaging 39 yards. Almost blocked, gets off a rather poor kick, and it is going to be down at the Florida 45-yard line. Steve Dennis of Georgia was putting the heat on him. Almost got him, may have gotten a piece of it. The halftime stats, as you can see, the time, not much difference in total possession, but look at the yard. 215 for Georgia and 237 for Florida. The only big difference in the statistics is in the score on the board, 27 to 13. All right, here comes Georgia. First down at the Florida 45-yard line. Gators lead 27-13. Ray Gock gives to Al Pollard his fullback. Pollard and Mac Lee working out of the Georgia backfield. Uh, here's a look at him close up. Ray Goff, who started the game. He was relieved by Matt Robinson. Starts the second half. Kevin McLee, 39. Pollard is number 43. And the wide receiver, the flanker, is Gene Washington, number 82. Second down. Call it six yards to go from the 41-yard line. Florida. Goff gives the ball this time to McLee. Fumbles the ball. Alvin Parrish, who made a big, big play in the first half defensively for the Florida Gators, comes up with another one. It was Charlie Williams, I think, that really busted him. And Scott Brantley, the other linebacker, number 55. So those two linebackers have had a great day. Here's Brantley. Here's Brantley, number 55. We've seen him all day. Look at him jump over the blocker, shakes the ball loose. And Alvin Parrish gets it for the Gators. First down, Florida from the 34-yard line. Here's Wilder going wide, runs through one tackler, but can't get through the follow-up. Over there is 55 for the Georgia Bulldogs. Ben Zambezi, 44. Lawrence Kraft, uh, 92. And maybe that was 44 I'm looking at. Keith, one of the things that's interesting here, these both of these teams are really running a lot of plays. They ran almost 80 plays in the first half, which is what the pros run about three Second down and 10. Ball loose, covered by Florida. Jimmy Fisher losing control of it, was able to fall on it and cover it. And it is a very good thing because number 42 is right there. That's Bill Krug. So it sort of works as sort of the rover or the monster man for the Georgia Bulldogs. But loss on the play is back to the 29-yard line, where it's third down and 15 now for Florida. Bill Krug is all, all over the field. He's their big play man. You can always look for him to cause a fumble or sack a quarterback. Wes Chandler to the left. Pass is thrown to the right side to Carr. Going down the sidelines, goes out of bounds. Didn't get the first down. He's about three yards short of it. So that bobble by Florida's quarterback Fisher having to control it and fall on it five yards short of the line of scrimmage turns out to be a big play in behalf of Georgia as they worked that little swing outside but didn't quite get enough for the first down. And so Alan Williams comes into the punt. Boot it, Alan. Boot it. Boot it, Alan. Boot it. Billy Wood, deep. Good kick. Viral Haynes. Well, Billy Wood uh, just would not give up on it. There were Florida people all over him on a 39-yard punt. He made the catch and was wrestled down immediately. It'll be right at the 20-yard line. The city of Jacksonville from the Mayflower with Larry Chambers and Drew DeRosa providing those pictures from up there. 
And let's jump right back down into the Gator Bowl now. First down, Georgia. Call it the 20-yard line. Just short of the 20. Ray Goff hands the ball away to Al Pollard. And Pollard is good for about three yards. Some of the scores from around the country. You've already heard the shocker. Here's some out of the Ivy League. Brown uh, over Dartmouth. Brown Bears having a big year. And Yale jumped on Princeton today, 39-7. And that sets up a pretty good battle for next week between Harvard and Yale. And Harvard is uh, handling its assignment all right today. Second down and seven yards to go from the 23-yard line. Goff keeps the ball. Ray turns it up. And waiting for him is Jeff Cantor. Defensive right in, a junior out of Sarasota, number 90 for Florida. Of course, the big score was uh, up at Lafayette, Indiana, Navy and Syracuse. George Welch's mid is getting one today, and the Colgate Red Raiders are going to continue along undefeated. Looks like it'll be Colgate and Rutgers getting together at the end of the season, perhaps undefeated. Wake Forest and Duke, that'll make Mr. Charles Howard very dismal. Back we go to Ray Goff as he looks and he throws, and the pass is a great catch by Davis. Steve Davis just went up there and took that ball. And it's a first down for Georgia. That was some kind of catch. He drilled that ball in there. I thought it was going to be intercepted for a minute. You watch Davis just take the ball away. This rolls out of just a quick rollout. Delivers it. It was a 24 there is the uh, Alvin uh, Cowan. It looked like he was going to intercept it and wound up uh, on the short end. Alvin did all he could, didn't he? 35 yard line. First down, Georgia. Goff rolls. Got some open field in front of him. Gets away from Brantley. Brantley gets his shirt. But the Georgia quarterback, Ray Goff, goes all the way down to the Florida 37-yard line before he's finally run out of bounds. Joel Parrish, great blocking to lead him around the corner. Now watch what? this. There's Scott Brantley. They faked the ball to the right. Goff rolled away from it. Let's watch whether we, we, why we call these tearaway jerseys. Look at this. What a great shot of losing the whole shirt. Undressed him, but uh, the quarterback will take the real estate. It's down, call it the 39-yard line of Florida. First down, and Matt Robinson comes in while Goff gets a new shirt. Gives the ball to Kevin McLean. Power yeah. running. Out of bounds at the seven. First and goal to go, Georgia. Ulysses Morris, 85. Gene Washington, 82. Big, big blocks on the run. You see Kevin Mc, McLee actually shook a block or a tackler off right at the line of scrimmage, and this is just outstanding running. He probably could have been stopped for no gain at the line of scrimmage. This is just great running. He's now got 100 and 109 yards of the ball game on 14 carries. Having a big day. First and goal to go from the seven-yard line of Florida. It's McLee again, and this time he gets planted. Ron Coleman, 61. Right on the number. Hey. Hey. Who was it that hey. missed him on that play before? Uh, Probably Coleman. Because <laughs> <laughs> he really got him that time. It's <laughs> Dooley, little smile flickering across the countenance on the sideline. It's second down goal to go from the six yard line. Stop, roll, looks for Washington. Throws short. Good touchdown. Pass to Norris. Ulysses Norris for the score, and Georgia is right back in the ball game. Matt Robinson will hold, and Alan Levitt will try for the extra point. A very important point. It's good. Nine minutes and 43 seconds to play in the third quarter. It is now 27-20. Florida leading Georgia. Here's the touchdown play as he looked at Washington deep in the corner and then came back down more towards the middle to hit Norris. Yeah, Florida was looking, I think, uh, to protect against Washington. And uh, Ulysses Norris just slipped right in the seam on the inside. Goff drills it right in there. You see uh, Washington to the outside, number 82, and they were all overprotecting on that side. So, Ray Goff loses a shirt, goes out, gets a new one, comes right back, and gets the six. Got a new game. 
Now here's the kickoff with Carr and Wilder deep. Beautiful picture there. Here's a sailing kick that'll go through the end zone and out of bounds. Off the field of play. And Florida now will get the ball first down at the 20. Here are the scores as North Carolina hangs in there having a fine season, 27-23. Memphis State holding a 14-7 lead over Tennessee. That's an in-cross-state trap. Kentucky is the next opposition for Florida. Auburn, the next opposition for Georgia. Michigan State leading Indiana. And Minnesota having a big day against Northwestern. Of course, the big, big, big upset, that score, Wisconsin over Iowa, 16-14. That's what Purdue used today to beat Michigan. Here is Jimmy Fisher giving the ball away to Tony Green, or was it Larry Brinson? Brinson is in there. Let's check that Florida backfield. It's Wilder Carr and Brinson with Morgan now coming in, bringing the play. Green was in for one play earlier in this quarter. I didn't see Tony active at all in the first half. He's had a sore neck. You know, uh, Florida needs the first down here to break the momentum that Georgia's generated, and uh, we'll see whether they get it or not. On second down and five, it is Wilder carrying the ball for about three yards. You know, Florida and Georgia met in Jacksonville back first time in 1933, and it has become a custom down in this part of the country. In 1933, of course, the first year of the Southeastern Conference. Over 70,000 fans come here every year, half from each school. It's a uh, Bonanza time for the city of Jacksonville and a great vacation for those who come with their team. Third down. They need almost two yards for the first down. From the 28, Fisher keeps. Didn't get it. Didn't get it. Lawrence Kraft, number 92, the defensive left end was the man that turned him and kept him from falling forward. Well, they needed that first down. Uh, I don't believe they've made one this second half, have they? third period and the momentum is all in Georgia's favor right now they should wind up with fairly decent field position on this kick the question now is whether or not Georgia will send everybody or whether they'll peel it off for a return and we don't know that well, Florida's going to kick it. and they're Look not here. fourth down they need about six inches they're going to go for it from their own 29 yard line Fisher they go wide with it he doesn't get it. Get it. Carr does not get it. Johnny Henderson, number 32, came up and made the play of the day for the Bulldogs so far. <laughs> wow. Well, it took some gizzards, but Doug Dickey and his kids to go out there and try to get it, too. See that. It's going to be first down for the Georgia Bulldogs at the Florida 29 as the Gators gamble and lose. Now, let's see how much they lost. If Georgia sticks it in, we'll have a tie ball game. And Ray Goff is the quarterback with Pollard and McLee behind him. Goff keeping, turns it up. And he's down to about the 21-yard line for eight yards. Here's the Florida Campbell. As Carr tries to bring it upfield, and he couldn't do it. As Johnny Henderson, number 32, comes in to get in. Pretty good stiff arm. Remember, Johnny Henderson's the same guy that got tripped up on that other pass, so he made made up for that one. He really is. Second down and two yards to go for Georgia from the Florida 21-yard line. The handoff is to the fullback, Al Pollard. And Pollard's got a first down for Georgia as he bangs it down to about the Florida 17-yard line. And the red and black is very much in evidence right now all over the Gator Bowl. You really get the feel, you know, you, you talk about momentum in a game, Keith, and you're just witnessing it here in the third quarter with this Georgia team. First down at the Florida 17 with six minutes and 59 seconds to go in the third quarter. The handoff is to Kevin McLee, and he is decked at the 15-yard line. Number 53, Charlie Williams, the linebacker, got it. This is the third successive year the Florida Gators have had the opportunity to win their first ever Southeastern Conference Championship. They're leading 27 to 20, but they're in trouble right now as Georgia is prowling. The Sugar Bowl spot goes to the Southeastern Conference champion. Gene Washington right wide to the right. Here comes Goff, pitches it out. That is McLee. He's at the six yard line. It's first down and goal to go for Georgia. See that little action that Goff put, uh, put on the defender? 
made him think that he was going to keep the ball, faked it to the outside, and then he dealt it off at the last minute. They're really, I'm amazed with the way that the two teams are uh, executing the option play, which is so difficult. Really, we've seen fumbles and errors, and here we are at the six-yard line with it. Goal line defense in for Florida. Brent Leott Totten comes in. He's the man that blocked the extra point try. Here's Al Pollard running back for Georgia. Just keeps on struggling, but he protects the ball well, and he's down to about the two-yard line. Charlie Williams has made two of those last three plays, and uh, he's six foot one, two thirty-seven, a real strong defender. He's been playing real well for that Florida ball club. Second down, goal to go, Georgia at the Florida two. 5.40 to go, third quarter. Bulldogs trying to tie it up. It's touchdown, Al Pollard. Joe Paris, Mike Wilson, Ulysses Norris escorted him in. You know what? Uh, Keith, uh, Vince Dooley was telling me yesterday about Pollard. He's not that fast. He says, but you just can't keep him out of there. He's such a determined, hard worker, and aggressive kid. The extra point try, the snap. It was a bad snap, but it got over. Somehow it got over. They bobbled the snap. It looked like one of the Florida players might have left it, but it just whistled over. And we've got a tie ball game. Here's the touchdown. What's the blocking on the right side? Epic 85, Norris. Really later block in, and Pollard slammed it through. So we're all even at 27 with 5.32 to go in the third quarter. The deep men for Florida, Willie Wilder and Earl Carr, as we again show you this sprawling city that right now is very quiet because all the attention is focused right here. And Alan Levitt just knocks it right on. He almost hit it in the river. Oh. Oh. He really popped it. Alvin Parrish, incidentally, the defensive back for Florida, number four, went off the field with some help. He was shaken up. Here's number 22, the hot man, Butch Fox for the University of Georgia. He's not that big, but he'll take on anybody, anywhere, under any circumstances. And right there, he ran head on into a fellow who's about 30 pounds bigger. <laughs> There's some action going on there. All right, here's Florida, first down. Give the ball to Wilder. Bounces off one man, and he's got two yards as he comes to the 22. Jeff Sanders. Number 99, the tackle for Georgia. All right. Now, you talked about your momentum a while ago and it's how it swung over to Georgia. This is a very critical time right here for the Florida Gators. Well, Vince Dooley, when he came out and was interviewed just before the beginning of the second half, said, well, we're going to get after him in the second half. And Boy, this third quarter is certainly testimony to that. Statement. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, man front. Here's uh, Fisher's pass. Pass is caught by Gaffney up at the 30-yard line. That should be a first down for the Florida Gators. And it is. Here's Jim. As you watch the Georgia defense try to stop Florida throughout the second half, particularly when they're trying to stop Wes Chandler deep, keep in mind that they've lost their experienced safety man, Mark Mitchell. He had a dislocated elbow in the first half. You might remember he made some big plays. Georgia has also temporarily lost All-American offensive guard Joel Parrish. He has a sprained ankle, may be able to come back, but may not. Keith? All right, Jimmy, thank you. First down for the Florida Gators. Wes Chandler to the left side. They've not gone to him lately, and you can see the junkyard dogs are just steaming. Uh -huh. They're swarming. Jeff Lewis, 61, led that charge that slipped inside the blocking and got the Florida ball carrier just short of the line of scrimmage. Look at that total yardage. And we've got 413, 410 now to go in the third quarter. I can't add that high. <laughs> They've been up and down this field. Second down, about ten and a half yards to go. Boy, first down for Florida, just inside the 30. Fisher gives to Carr. And Carr is caught, number 87, fought his way through Dickie Clark. And brought him down. Clark is a 205-pound senior from Rossville, Georgia. Not very big up front defensively, but they sure are active. Chandler going in there. I'm surprised they haven't gone to Chandler a little more. Yeah. Of course, they haven't had a whole lot of time with the ball, have they? That's exactly right, but uh, they've run the ball here. I, I don't know whether they feel uh, this field position has changed. Of course, that gamble that Dickey took uh, right around the 30-yard line looks big right now. Two wide receivers, Schuler and Chandler. Here's Fisher rolling. Got to hurry. Uh -oh. No chance. 
Coming from the blind side was Bill Krug, the rover. Decked him back on the 25-yard line, and Jimmy Fisher really took a wrap, but rolls away from it and comes off under his own power. Well, that's what we said earlier. This Bill uh, Krug is their big play guy, and uh, they said, watch out. He'll cause a fumble, sack a quarterback, and he just did. It is fourth down, and Florida must punt. Williams, Allen Williams to hit it. That's a beauty. Williams. Dropping back Woods to Georgia. Feels it at the 26. Retreats to the 23 and comes back to the 30. Maybe the 29, I guess. And so we have 2.42 to go in the third quarter. And the score is all even at 27-27. With one minute to go in the game at Grant Field, Georgia Tech is out in front of Notre Dame 23-14. That is a major upset in the making. We've already had one huge one today, and look at this one at Lincoln, Oklahoma State, ahead of Nebraska in the fourth quarter. <laughs> this has got to be Halloween, doesn't it? <laughs> well, you spread those scholarships around <laughs> like that, or cut the scholarships back and spread the blue chippers around. It makes a difference, doesn't it? This made my stomach nervous. <laughs> Here's Georgia now, first down, just short of the 30-yard line. The Georgia quarterback, Goff, and uh, Kevin McLee run together, and Goff is wobbling around holding his hand. It looks like Ray Goff has injured his hand on that handoff. Or a finger. Uh, well, it jammed the finger. Yeah, he's waving. Here comes uh, Matt Robinson into the lineup, and Goff will leave. Boy, this Georgia Bulldog team has got a lot of character. They're really impressive. They've come back from a two-touchdown deficit, and they're right back in here going again. McLeod gains seven yards. Out to the 33, second down and seven. Robinson there at quarterback, hands the ball over to Pollard. Pollard breaks it big. Goes out to the 43-yard line, first down, Georgia. It's 14-0 in the third quarter, Georgia, as they have come back to tie, and they are just roaring. Goff comes back into the Georgia lineup now as Robinson goes out. First down, Goff still got it. Gives it to McLee. And he muscles for about three yards. Before they can bring him down. Penalty flag is over there. Thrown at the point of the tackle. Could be a face masking. Could yeah, be a personal foul. We'll see. I think, I think it's a face mask. Yeah. There goes the Florida team going backwards. 15 yards. Well, you talk about when things change. Really changed. Florida has had everything go against us in this, against themselves in this third period, and there's still 138 left. The ball is marked just inside the Florida 40-yard line. First down, Georgia, with a minute and 38 seconds to play in the third quarter. McLee goes out of the Georgia backfield. McClendon replaces it. gives to Pollard and Goff was hit just as the ball was handed off but they got away with it and got about five yards on the carry this Monday on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football the Los Angeles Rams and the Cincinnati Bengals from Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati the Los Angeles Rams and the Bengals will be seen on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football at 9 Eastern 8 Central Time for most of these ABC stations oh that will be a good one it's second down call it yards from the 36 yard line Goff coming down the line keeps it fakes it turns it up he's got a first down a penalty flag is thrown we may have a clip coming up here as the ball carrier reached about the 19 yard line going to get a clip yep that'll cost him 15 so that's going to nullify a good long run boy that Ray Goff he's about 210 6263 he's a big old dude in there and he really handles the ball well he ran for about 15, and they're going to bring it back. What kind of yardage does he have today, uh, Jimmy? Jimmy Ritz, our statistician, with the quickest pencil in town. There it is. Uh, 12 times he's carried for 106 yards. That's not a bad average. Watch the upper right-hand corner of the screen. You'll see the clip. Now, you see up there, there's the... Ontario account is being clipped by number 58. 
Pete, I, 56, is it? Yeah, Joe Tarasinski to center. Yeah, center. So the ball is back at the 34-yard line, where it is second down and four. Penalty from the point of the foul. Here's Goff. He levers it out to McClendon. He's got some room. And they get him just short of the first down. Alvin Cowan, 24, coming up in a big hurry to get him with David Wright, number 28. And that is just short of the first down. Still, more score. Okay, two big upsets in college football today. The big shocker, of course, will be coming up here in a moment. This was as much a shocker, I guess, Georgia Tech over Notre Dame. But look at what happened. Michigan, number one in the nation, knocked off by Purdue. And Purdue led in every category today. It wasn't a fluke. All right, Bill, third down and about a yard and a half. It is Pollard over the middle, and Alvin Pollard goes for the first down. Goodness sakes, he looked like a runaway truck. <laughs> The Florida defensive secondary knows he's around. He carried the ball to the 23-yard line for a Georgia first down. The Bulldogs have scored uh, 15 points in the third quarter. After three quarters of play, we are... Where we've played 45 minutes of football in this 54th game between Georgia and Florida. And we're right where we started, dead even. Goodyear Blimp offering the pictures from high above the Gator Bowl. Down on the field, Georgia has a first down at the Florida 23-yard line, trying to get the lead. Ray Goff at quarterback. Hands the ball away to Kevin McLee. And McLee rumbles to the 15-yard line. Joel Parrish with a tremendous block. And Mike Wilson, big 77, right along with him. Watch 67 and 77. They're just cross-blocking in here. The tight end and the tackle driving down to the inside. The guard blocking out. And Pollard's finding the hole. Look at it. It's a good one. Second down and two yards to go from the 15. And Georgia makes a mistake. Broken play. That'll cost them five. One thing about uh, this fourth quarter. Of course, Georgia dominated the entire third quarter. But the fourth quarter, as you look at the record of Florida, They've been in some close ball games. They've won some games by two points, three points, right. four points. Here's the stats. And in this ball game, you have had, what is it, 60, 54. That's 114 plays running the ball game. 114 <laughs> plays. <laughs> We've still got a quarter to play. And they don't even look tired. Of course, Florida <laughs> has looked a little weary here for the last few moments. The defense has been out there a very long time. Second down, seven yards to go as they back him up to the 19-yard line. Goff keeps it, gets around the corner. Number 53 runs him down for Florida, Charlie Williams. It was Joel Parrish, number 67, again making a big block to lead Goff downfield and to a first down as they mark the ball right about the 10-yard line. Today on ABC's Wide World of Sports, Howard Cosell is out in San Francisco for a premium heavyweight fight between two of the top challengers, Jimmy Young and Ron Lyle. And of course, right after the ball game today, you'll have the Potential College scoreboard. It's at 5.30 Eastern, 4.30 Central, and 5 Pacific time over most of these stations. Play goes inside with Al Pollard carrying from the 10. He gets to about the 7. Keith, a few... Uh, <laughs> if anybody questions uh, Georgia dominating this ga the game in the third quarter, they rushed for 149 yards to Florida six. That's kind of dominant. 159, 159 yards to six. Some kind of quarter. Second down. Almost goal to go, but not quite. Goff keeps it. Dives to the five. Ray Goff gets to the five-yard line and getting up. Brantley, number 55, the freshman linebacker for the Gators. I think he'll put it up here. I got a feeling that uh, Goff may throw the football. Well, Steve Davis has come into the lineup, replacing Mark Hodge for Georgia. The nose of the ball almost touching the five yard line. I'm not sure that they can get a first down, maybe by an inch without scoring. But it's third down from the five. Goff keeps it. He's got some room. Touchdown. Oh, 
Kevin McLee, the running back, through the block and got Ray Goff around the corner, and the big quarterback took it in. Here's the replay on it. Goff wants to throw the ball to the double flankers. He rolls out to the left. The contained man, he steps inside of. Right there, he's blocked down. And Goff sees the daylight. He heads for the corner. Williams, 53, is trying to catch him, but there's no chance. All right, here's the extra point try by Levitt. It's up. It's good. So we have 12 minutes and 42 seconds to play in the ball game in Georgia. Finally gets the lead, 34-27. Next Saturday on ABC, an outstanding NCAA football doubleheader, beginning with a regional lineup headlined by Alabama versus Notre Dame. Check local listings for the game in your area, followed by Texas A&M against Arkansas on ABC. The city of Jacksonville just fairly throbbing with excitement. This place has just been jumping. Because last night, everywhere you turned, people were talking football, and why not? It's Georgia 34 and Florida 27, and Willie Wilder does not get a handle on the ball as it skitters into the end zone. He has to go back and cover it because it's a live ball, and if Georgia had been able to get there, they might have come up with another touchdown just that quickly. With 12 minutes and 37 seconds to play, Georgia now with 10 plays and 70 yards to get the lead. Georgia took the initial lead on the opening possession, took it right in for the touchdown. Florida came back to tie, went to the lead, and since that time, the Gators were dominating. At halftime, it was 27 to 13. But then Georgia came out and just took command in the second half, scoring 14 points in the third quarter, and finally going ahead in the waning moments and the beginning of the fourth quarter. And Jimmy Fisher, the quarterback for Florida, keeping on the option, turns it up, and he gets about eight yards before he is finally brought down. There's the Howard family amidst those jubilant Georgia folks over there. Well, I see one Florida hat in there. Carolyn and the girls. Carrie and Chris. They've got big doings in front of them, just down the road in Orlando. Here's Willie Wilder going for the first down, gets the first down. And that era for Seekin is the first time in the whole second half that the Florida Gators have really shown some power. Right, you know, you can't discount them. They've been in close games before during the course of the year. Number one, number two, they've got terrific speed. And number three, they can throw the football. So don't count them out of this football game. Those two ball-headed gentlemen you saw, not really ball, just shaved, Joel Parrish and Mike Wilson, 67 and 77, who have been super for Georgia on the right side of the offensive line. Right now it's Florida, first down at the 34-yard line. Fisher going deep, going for Chandler. He doesn't quite get it. It is intercepted. Wow. Intercepted on a spectacular catch by Billy Woods, it looks like, number 37. It is Billy Woods. Watch this. An absolutely spectacular catch by the Georgia defensive back. Boy, it is some kind of a catch. I thought up from up here that he had dropped the ball and it hit the ground. But let's look at it right there. No, he got it. Here, here's another view of it. The ball, he gets his hands underneath the ball. He juggles it momentarily. Watch right here. The ball hits his hands. He starts to lose it, but then he grabs it back before he hits the ground. All right, we go back to live action on the field. Ray Goff gives to Al Pollard as Georgia leads 34-27, and they start from just outside their own 20-yard line with 11 minutes and 35 seconds to play in the ball game. Here's Bill. Well, we hate to distract you here at this moment, but we do want to say that Pitt, number two in the nation, probably will be the nation's number one team. After today's upset of Michigan, Tony Dorsett scored three touchdowns, ran for 212 yards. Okay, Bill, second down and seven yards to go from the 24-yard line for Georgia. They'll stay with it on the ground, and it's Kevin McLee breaking it big out across the 40, out to the 41-yard line. Tomorrow, ABC Sports brings you the final round of the Walt Disney World Golf Classic National Team Championship. As you saw earlier here on ABC, the teams of Woody Blackburn, Bill Cratchit, tied at minus 22 or 22 under par with Jerry McGee and Alan Miller. That's at 2.30 Eastern, 1.30 Central tomorrow over most of these ABC stations. There's the man, Billy Woods, who made that big interception for Georgia. Goff hands the ball. Oh, fumble! 
Georgia keeps it. And Vince Dooley almost fainted. <laughs> did they get it back? Yep. I couldn't see. Yeah, they did. Looks like Willie McClendon, who is in the backfield position, recovered the fumble. Kevin McLee for 152 yards today on 21 carries. Not too bad. Uh, McClendon goes out of the ball game. Florida's doing back. back. I'm sorry, Pete. Second down and five yards to go. They counter it back inside. And they're short of the first down. Their play gains to about the 49-yard line. So Georgia now sitting on a seven-point lead. And McLee was brought down by number 61 for the Florida Gators, Ron Coleman. As you're wise, I'm watching up here. I see that Florida is changing their defenses. They go from even to odd. They're trying to stunt the game, but uh, Georgia's been able to pick up everything. Right now, they need about two and a half yards for the first down on third down. McLee in motion. Give it to Pollard. Penalty flag goes down. Probably going to be a call against Georgia. One indication is offside. I thought I saw one indication of illegal procedure. Might have been motion. I think the man in motion uh, might have been moving towards the line. Might have line. turned up field just a little bit. Yeah. Little tiny mistakes can be so damaging in a ball game that is far, far, far from over with nine minutes and 40 seconds to play. And that's the call five yards against the Georgia Bulldogs. Man in motion turned up field too soon at the 44 yard line. Now for Georgia. It'll be third down and a long seven yards. Georgia seven penalties and 83 yards. Florida two penalties, 28 yards. Goff gives it to Steve Davis. Davis pitches it outside to McLee, and McLee goes for a first down. And there's one out of the book. Last year, Georgia beat Florida with a tight end coming around to throw a pass. Right there, you saw the tight end come around and pitch it to a trailing back. <laughs> this little gadget, you watch the tight end coming back from the backside. Now he's an option runner like a quarterback. He's got a guard out in front of him. He deals the ball off. This is what you call little gadgets in football, and uh, they had a big gainer out of it. And it's first down for Georgia at the Florida 43-yard line. Goff hands to Pollard. And Pollard, who's having a big day, takes it to the 36-yard line. That's seven yards. Competing in Southeastern Conference football requires a lot of things. Combination of athletic and academic ability. Georgia and Florida students majoring in English, accounting, you name it. They're all represented. All the departments out here on these two football teams. Second down, three. From the 36, it's Pollard again. Going for the first down, he's got it. As he bangs down to the Florida, 31. Now the Georgia offensive front is beginning to carve up the Florida defense. They've just been running. It just seems as if uh, whatever the Florida Gators try defensively just doesn't seem to work. It, uh, Georgia picks them up without any difficulty. Florida now calls timeout with eight minutes and 25 seconds to go in a ball game. Georgia 34, Florida 27. With five minutes to go in that game at Lincoln, Nebraska has scored and a six-yard pass hits Ferragamo to Ken Spate was the thing that did it. The Prudential College scoreboard with Dave Dials and Warner Wolf will be coming up right after our telecast, and they'll have all the details of the game today. Let's go back to action. All right, Bill, thank you. At the 31-yard line, it is first down for the Georgia Bulldogs. They are marching in the second half of play. Down 27-13 at halftime. They've come back to lead 34-27. The handoff goes to... Kevin McLee, the junior out of Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Era, I want to say this. Up front, the Georgia Bulldogs, 65, Steve Collier, 66, George Collins, Joe Tarashinsky, 56, Joel Parrish, 67, and Mike Wilson, 77, and Ulysses Norris, 85, the tight end. They have just flat whipped Florida in this second half. Oh. You know, it's so obvious here. Look at the yardage that the box have made. But uh, backs don't go unless somebody's doing something up front. Oh, uh, you're an old lineman, that guy. <laughs> On the back, I have to get down at eight yards, yards to go. Goff gives it out to McLee, and Kevin McLee gets it to the 25-yard line. He got about three yards on that carry. Perry LeCount made the tackle. Mm -hmm. 
The lights have been turned on now as we work our way toward the hours of dusk. The Florida Gators have never won a Southeastern Conference championship. Came in in conference play undefeated. Now Georgia wins this ball game today. All they have to do is beat Auburn next week, and they're on their way to the Sugar Bowl. Here's Lake Off rolling. Going to keep it. And they roll him out of bounds down around the 23-yard line. Alvin Cowens, number 24, making the defensive play for Florida. Keith, uh, you recall the stats were pretty even in the first half. And here we are in the second half with Georgia now has 226 yards rushing to Florida's 11. Wow. Now that is just unbelievable dominance. I've never seen a game quite that, uh, and any one team dominate uh, a team in the third and fourth period after having yielded, uh, what was it in the first half, 215 or 237 yards? Yes. Yeah. Seven minutes and three seconds to play in the game, and Georgia spends a timeout. Here's Jim. One historical fact that we've mentioned before, but it bears repeating. Florida has never won a Southeastern Conference championship. Time and time again, they've come down toward the end of the season. Usually to this game, needing a win to nail down the championship, they've never gotten it. They needed a win last year and lost in the closing moments to Georgia. A tie in 1969 against Georgia kept them from a conference championship. Steve Spurrier's senior year, 1966, they lost to Georgia and lost the conference championship. There have been other occasions, but those are the losses that hurt most bitterly. Florida coaches are aware of it. Everybody in the stands or roots for Florida for a long time is aware of it. And you have to wonder, as you come down toward the end of this game, if the Florida players on the field don't feel the weight of that history on top of them. Keith? They're feeling the front weight right now of the offensive line of Georgia, I'll tell you. Fourth down. Fourth down, they need a yard. Almost exactly a yard. It's Pollard. He's got it. 19-yard line of Florida. He went right in behind Ulysses Norris and Mike Wilson, and he got it. He just makes the right call every time he comes up the line of scrimmage. That golf makes the right call. Right blocking call. He hands off to the right spot. They're really executing this fear with this perfection. Both teams brilliantly coached, utilizing the tools at their disposal so very, very well. First down at the Florida 19 for Georgia. Goff gives it outside to McLee. And every time Goff can handle that ball, he keeps it for so long, the Florida people at times defensively look like they are almost hesitant to commit on it. Yeah. You know, uh, the thing that strikes me in watching this Georgia ball club all afternoon is the similarity between uh, the UCLA yeah. ball club, both yeah. offensively and defensively. It's very similar in nature. Quick defense, good running, good offensive blocking, good backs. It'd be a fair matchup, wouldn't it? Yeah, sure would. <laughs> Doug Dickey very concerned on the sidelines. Georgia still controlling the ball with six minutes to play in the game. Goff gives it to Pollard. And Pollard dives on second down and four. And they get him at about the 11-yard line. Next Saturday, we'll have some regional action for you on an NCAA football doubleheader. 12.30 Eastern time, Alabama, Notre Dame from South Bend, Indiana. Other regional games will be announced on Monday, then at 4 Eastern time. Big game in the Southwest Conference between Texas A&M and Little Rock. So join us starting at 12.30 Eastern. Arkansas at <laughs> Little Rock. Arkansas this week ranked 12th, and uh, we've got a time called on the field. It's going to be charged against the Georgia Bulldogs. So we've got now 5.37 to play in the ball game. Georgia with the ball and leading 34-27. On third down and two yards to go, Florida must stop Georgia right here in order to have a chance to win this ball game. McLean. They did not stop him. It is first down and goal to go for the Georgia Bulldogs at the Florida seven yard line. And we are going to have ourselves some kind of an argument over picking the offensive and defensive player of the game. Defense may not be too hard, but offense, we're going to have to have a caucus. You're looking at McLee with 178 yards and Goff with 117 I'm yards. I'm also looking at Joel Parrish, number 67, offensive right guard. Yeah, he made a lot of things happen. Pitch out to McLee, spins, and goes to the corner just short of the goal line. Terry LeCount could have stopped him right on the line of scrimmage, but uh, Kevin McLee put a real move on him and took it right to the one-inch line, or one-foot line, I should say. 
Out of bounds to stop the clock at 5.07 to play in the ball game. Just inside the one yard line. Second down and goal to go. Goff. Touchdown. And it may very well be with that touchdown, Florida's hopes of winning finally a Southeastern Conference championship has come tumbling down. Yeah, well, just five minutes and four seconds left. They're going to have to put it up and have some big plays, although they are capable of big plays. They've had a lot of them during the course of the year. Georgia set on the ball, kept the ball in that drive of 80 yards, six minutes and 42 seconds. Must have seemed like an eternity for the Florida people. Here's the kick by Levin. It is good. And now it is a 14-point Georgia lead at 41 to 27 with only 5.04 to play in the ball game. The city of Jacksonville, as the sun begins to set, we'll be right back for the kickoff. Today, ABC's Wide World of Sports presents live from San Francisco, Ron Lyle, the fifth-ranked heavyweight contender, against third-ranked Kimmy Young, who lost a controversial decision to Muhammad Ali, and the speed and excitement of the National Drag Racing Championships, today on ABC. Georgia will kick off. Florida sends Carr and Wilder deep. The Gators have come storming back so many times already this season. This kickoff is way back into the end zone, and Wilder this time is held by Earl Carr and says, Willie, you stay right there. Last time he tried to run it out of the end zone, they got him up around the nine-yard line. This time, they'll bring it out to the 20. Let's go back in the third quarter and remember a fourth down gamble that failed. That was a key play, unquestionably. You know, one of the things about this football game, I thought maybe a field goal might decide it, but there's only been only touchdowns scored in this game. No field goals, and there's been 10 touchdowns. Six by Georgia. West Chandler comes wide to the right side. He has been largely ignored or particularly well covered in the second half. Fisher looks for him, pitches it out. Big lineman's got the ball, Joe Pupello, who came back to block. Jimmy Fisher was caught, and he just saw a friendly blue shirt and pitched it out to him, but Lawrence Kraft was right there to mess it up. I, I think he knows now how the running backs feel. There's about five Georgia guys on him. Kraft is, uh, no, it's Jeff Sanders, 99, who leaves the field for the Georgia Bulldogs, hobbling a little bit. This program, a ex special exclusive of ABC Sports. And I'll give you that five-second pause in just a moment. But right now, let's see what the Florida Gators do on second down and 12. Fisher back to throw. Gators got to put it up. Passes away. Passes. Caught by Chandler. Boy, he made a remarkable catch, I'll tell you that, because he was absolutely well covered. Billy Woods is all over him. Yeah, he just comes right down and out. And uh, Fisher puts it right, right to him. Set 37. Uh, yeah, Billy, Billy Woods. Woods. Yeah, he's right there. He's the man that made that big interception for Georgia. Well, the reason that looked close looked like it went through, almost went through Chandler. Third down and two, and Florida trying to get the first down. They've got it as Wilder breaks it out to the 40-yard line. So he moved it from the 28 to the 40 for 12 yards. Now, let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. minutes and 38 seconds to play in the ball game. Tony Green is in the lineup. 799 total yards in the ball game. One more yard. They, they, they'll get the 800 probably before they're through. Pass goes over the middle. It's intercepted. Bad pass and it's picked off by Johnny Henderson, number 32. Penalty flag on the tackle. The pass was thrown too high for the intended receiver. He went right at Henderson and right on the numbers. He just overthrew it. Uh, poor throw, really. It was a secondary receiver, I think. Well, against either one of these uh, football teams, if you take a deep breath and try to relax, they'll just jump all over you. And the Georgia Bulldogs have certainly jumped all over the Florida Gators here in the second half. The penalty is against Georgia. It's a big one of 15 yards, and it Kraft is uh, 
Uh, it's Jeff Sanders, 99, who leaves the field for the Georgia Bulldogs, hobbling a little bit. This program, a ex special exclusive of ABC Sports. And I'll give you that five-second pause in just a moment. But right now, let's see what the Florida Gators do on second down and 12. Fisher back to throw. Gators got to put it up. Passes away. Passes caught by Chandler. Boy, he made a remarkable catch, I'll tell you that, because he was absolutely well covered. Billy Woods is all over him. Yeah, he just comes right down and out, and uh, Fisher puts it right right to him. It's at 37, uh, yeah, Billy, Billy Woods. Woods. Yeah, he's right there. He's the man that made that big interception for Georgia. Well, the reason that looked close looked like it went through, almost went through Chandler. Third down and two, and Florida trying to get the first down. They've got it as Wilder breaks it out to the 40-yard line. So he moved it from the 28 to the 40 for 12 yards. Now, let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Three minutes and 38 seconds to play in the ball game. Tony Green is in the lineup. 799 total yards in the ball game. One more yard that... Yeah, yeah, they'll get the 800 probably before they're through. Pass goes over the middle. It's intercepted. Bad pass, and it's picked off by Johnny Henderson, number 32. Penalty flag on the tackle. The pass was thrown too high for the intended receiver. He went right at Henderson and right on the numbers. He just overthrew it. Uh, poor throw, really. It was a secondary receiver, I think. Well, against either one of these uh, football teams, if you take a deep breath and try to relax, they'll just jump all over you. And the Georgia Bulldogs have certainly jumped all over the Florida Gators here in the second half. The penalty is against Georgia. It's a big one of 15 yards, and it is for clipping. So he's trying to throw an out pattern, and he looks back to the inside, just overthrows him. And there's a clip right there. You can see, I think it was number, I couldn't see the number, 83, was it? I believe that's right. 35-yard line now. First down, Georgia, with only 3.19 to go in the ball game and six on a 14-point lead. They'll just grind along. Florida has got the gang tackle. They get Pollard. He picked up a couple of yards, and that's all. The Prudential College School Board comes up with Warner Wolf and Dave Dials right after the ball game, and there's plenty to talk about. And then ABC's Wide World of Sports features. A heavyweight fight between Ron Lyle and Jimmy Young. And Doug Dickey, not too satisfied at the moment. Uh, Ray Goff hands the ball away to uh, McLee, I guess it is. Kevin McLee, number 39, who's been alternating some of the time today with McClendon, Willie McClendon. McClendon probably is the heir apparent to McClee's uh, position if and when uh, Kevin ever leaves. It must seem to some of the people who've been playing Georgia the last couple of three days, he's been there forever. He's only a junior. Two minutes and 33 seconds to play in a game, and Georgia controlling it. That's a pretty picture, isn't it? From the airship Mayflower, the Goodyear blimp. The sun just beginning to settle down. A beautiful sunset. Very sunny. You know, Keith, in this game, we've had three backs go over the 100-yard mark. McLee has gone 29 times for 106 yards, and Goff 16 for 118, and Wilder for 102 yards and 14 carries. On third down, they need about a half a yard. Goff keeps the ball, pokes his head in there, and gets the first down for the Georgia Bulldogs. And now, with the clock running, two minutes and 26 seconds to play in the ball game. They'll start running as soon as they move the change. Georgia leading 41-27. Remember, it was 27-13 at halftime. Next week, it'll be Texas A&M and Arkansas yeah, at Little Rock. One. I'll get that straight. Yeah, one. Yeah, one. Yeah, one. going at 2-10. Georgia Bulldogs can beat Auburn next week. We'll see them New Year's Day in the Sugar Bowl. They go to Al Pollard and the sturdy running back. Just keeps banging away on first down at the... 46-yard line. He's got about three yards up to near the 48-49. Uh, Keith, you know, for the college football fans that uh, watching this this game, we're nearing the 800-yard mark in total offense in this game in this contest. And these two teams have really moved it, particularly, of course, Georgia in the second half from a rushing standpoint. Ball is given to Kevin McLean. 
And he takes it for two yards to the 50 before he is rolled back. And we go inside a minute and a half to play in the ball game. And this time, I think you can say the junkyard dogs did quite well because they just simply came out in the second half and shut off the high-powered Florida offense. And that's the man right there, Eric Russell, who puts the defense together for Vince Dooley's Georgia Bulldogs. <laughs> he looks tough, doesn't he? Time call by Florida with 127 to go. And Georgia leads it by 14. And so it's Goff and uh, with one minute to play in the ball game now the Georgia Bulldogs have put it away they have defeated the Florida Gators they lead 41 to 27 and I don't want to get involved in symbolic analogies here as the sun goes sinking down Georgia's going to be pitched for five yards here for too much time and delay of the game that stops the clock at 46 seconds to play in the ball game let's go right now to Bill Fleming for the rundown on the and here they are the offensive player of today's game Ray Goff the quarterback of the Georgia Bulldogs and Jim Griffith linebacker and a one thousand dollar check on behalf of Chevrolet to the respective schools and it goes to the general scholarship fund I think we have a penalty on that one Pete Penalty flags were thrown as Bucky Dilt punts it away with 44 seconds, 43 running down. Georgia covers the ball all the way back at the floor to 13. We'll get definition of the penalty. I want to thank Jerry Klein, who's our research man and status uh, spotter, and our statistician Jimmy Ritz, who came zipping down from his master's degree work from Northwestern University and congratulate Ara Parsegian and his pretty lady Katie grandparents for the second time John Francis Burke the third has arrived in the world all right <laughs> <laughs> executive producer of NCAA football is Rune Arledge coverage of today's game produced by Chuck Howard directed by Andy Sedaris and our technical director John Allen and the penalty is marched off now against Florida yes. illegal procedure against the Gators at uh, waved off as the Georgia Bulldogs rather have the ball back where it is at the 13 yard line 41 seconds to play in the ball game you just got to know how disappointed uh, Doug Dickey is of course the uh, Southeastern Conference Championship never have won it here you're within a you know, one game of it and of course they played a super first half and were leading by two touchdowns and the second half is a disaster for him and I know that it'll be a tough night and a tough week for him before the next game Florida's ball at the 13 yard line. Jimmy Fisher is the quarterback. He'll put it up. Penalty flags all over the field. He throws the ball short to Wilder. And Willie gets it out to the 35, 25 before Georgia wrestles him down. But you've got a call going, and it's probably against Florida. I thought I saw movement on the left side of the line, and that's what it is illegal procedure. So that'll back the Gators up if the Bulldogs choose to take it, and they probably will. 33 seconds remaining to play in a ball game. If the Georgia Bulldogs beat Auburn next week, they will be in the Sugar Bowl. Doug Dickey, his team certainly deserves a bowl bait. I think it's an exciting football team. Ball has moved back inside the nine yard line. 27 ticks remaining on the clock. Fisher's pass is away, intercepted by Zambezi. Zambezi had dropped back to cover the tight end, Jimmy Stevens, and he picks it off. And that will really do it. Here's Jim. This is the guy who came out and got the Georgia offense moving in the second half. Did you make any changes to get it going or just knock him off the line of scrimmage? Well, no, so we felt like the first half that we moved the ball real well on the ground. We could throw on him when we, you know, pretty much. And we just came back and took our game plan and just went right at him. It's a heck of a time to get hurt. What's this? Well, this uh, I heard it the first year, and it's just a little sprain, and uh, just got it stung a little bit, and it feels great. You feel all right if you beat Auburn and get in the Sugar Bowl, huh? Amen. That's great. That's Ray, we want to congratulate you. You've been chosen our Chevrolet Offensive Player of the Game. Well, thank you, sir. I wish that I could, uh, instead of putting that thing in my name, I'd like to do kind of like Matt Robinson did, and I'd like to give it to Hugh Hendricks, a guy that means a lot to us that passed away at the first of the year. And, I'd like to give it to Hugh Henderson and ask you to put it in his name because he's the one that inspired us all. It's a sincere and beautiful thought. We thank, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Ray Goff. 
Clock ticking down into the ball game at hand, and it's over. The Georgia Bulldogs have won this 54th game against the Florida Gators by a score of 41 to 27. And there is the emotion, the ultimate contrast. As Vince Dooley is written off the field by his victorious Georgia Bulldogs on the Florida side. That's the story. Well, I've been at both ends of it, Keith, and uh, pictures tell the whole story. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this afternoon's ball game between the Georgia Bulldogs and the Florida Gators. Final score, 41-27, Georgia.